Welcome to Injury Law Today, the ultimate podcast for personal injury attorneys. Today with me, I have Justin Blitz from Blitz Law Group. How are you doing today, Justin? I am doing well, Randy. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining today. We, today, we have um, attorney um, Justin Blitz. And what we're going to do is we're going to explore exactly what it takes to succeed in a highly competitive personal injury space. And Justin's up in New York, where it is very, very competitive up there, like Los Angeles and Houston and other major cities. Um, let's just get jump right into it. Justin, can you tell us uh, about your background and um, how you became a personal injury lawyer? I sure can, Randy. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for um, being here. You know, it's this uh, injury law is in my blood. Um, my father, my uncle, they were both um, plaintiffs, plaintiffs, personal injury and malpractice attorneys. Um, and my family has been um, representing victims of others negligence in the courthouses of New York for um over 50 years now so um so so we uh it, it's a long history and i i grew up going into uh you know my father and my uncle's office and seeing what was going on and so i guess it was almost a foregone conclusion that i was going to be following in their footsteps although i have to say between um my father and my uncle there are um there's six, seven children, and a whole bunch of grandchildren. Um, I'm the only attorney who does what we do. So, continuing the legacy. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, what sets your firm um, apart from others in the industry? So, um, we've been uh, practicing here in New York. Um, I've had my firm since um, 2008. And um, I'm proud to say that the results that we have had in the um in the in the in the past over 15 years have been um really staggering uh i've i'm proud that we we work very very hard we're very highly trained and um i i i take every case as does everyone in my office in a very serious nature. Um, and uh, it, it's really, it's really the results speak for themselves. I have to say um, we're, we're, we're proud to look at our history and see, see some of the things that we've done and, you know, we've set precedent in the, in the state and, um, We've represented uh, clients with some of the, you know, most horrific injuries and just, you know, uh, very, very fascinating, complicated cases. Um, we've also had a fair share of our celebrity type cases and uh, we just finished representing um, Trevor Noah in a malpractice case and uh so 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 we 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 have handled everything and anything and our clients run from anyone into really anyone out there from all all spectrums of the society um and we're proud of our results absolutely Absolutely. How do you guys, how do you approach client intake and um, case evaluation to ensure the best outcome for your clients? Yeah, you know, so we, um, we have a very, I wouldn't say it's, it really depends on the case when it depends on our threshold and whether we're going to take the case. Um, you know, for example, malpractice cases are, 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 they're, they're 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 tough and they're time consuming and they're expensive um uh there's also a financial reality to them where our fees are not the same as they are in other types of cases and you know so i look for a really need a at least in uh, new york we really are looking for a catastrophic injury a permanent injury as a result of malpractice whereas 
you know, if it's a premises case or an auto case, depending on the carrier, we might have a different level of threshold with respect to our injury. But, you know, it, it's a whole number of factors. Uh, I, we've, we've earned the right and we are busy enough to be able to pick and choose, so to speak. Um, and uh, we're looking for good people, though, most importantly, honest, good people and not anyone here to game the system or anything like that. And I tell clients all the time, it's it's our time, it's my money, and we're, we're very busy. Uh, we're, we're nonstop. And, you know, so if I'm taking your case and I'm moving forward, you should feel very confident that I'm going to have a good result for you. Uh, because of uh, be, be, because because we're so busy and because of our track record and there's there's really no time for games here and no time for frivolous nonsense. Absolutely, <clears throat> excuse me. In your experience, what are some misconceptions about uh, personal injury law that you often encounter? Um, misconceptions. You know, it's interesting. There's so many out there. We've, um, when I say we, I mean plaintiffs' lawyers in general have very much lost a PR battle in the last 20 years, so to speak. When we go, when I go into a courtroom and I'm about to do a jury selection, uh, it's not really a head, it's not really an even starting field. It's, it's very much, it's very much we have strikes against us absolutely there are preconceived notions mm -hmm. um uh, there's there's no doubt that if i i walk into a room of 30 potential jurors it, at least a third of them think that my client's lying and that both my <laughs> client and i are there to right to pull to pull the wool over them and to strike it rich and 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 looking for some sort of handout mm -hmm. um you know the first the first of course you know we always have had to deal with things like the mcdonald's case and these runaway jurors and so forth people don't really understand that um if there is let's say a crazy jury number on a case that doesn't deserve it at least in new york that's what the appellate division they they, they knock that right back to where it it, it should be and mm -hmm. make sure that you know I, I i've been doing this so close to 20 years i've never taken anyone's home um i've never seen a outrageous runaway crazy numbered result and i've gotten a lot of them but it doesn't mean that we're able to collect it. it Absolutely, you know, the, court, the court puts it back into its um, into its realm of what's fair. Um, it's it's interesting, you know. Jurors seem to think that it's like you know someone's there hitting the lotto and they're looking to, you know, what should we reward them? Us as lawyers have done a bad job with our terminology, our vocabulary, our vernacular. You know, it's not a reward. Mm -hmm. um, it's compensation. It's 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 for 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 harm, and it's it's fair compensation. And it needs. You, I tell jurors all the time, if it's got to be the fair amount, not not anything more, not anything less. Um, you know, like the word accident, we use kick around the word accident like it's like it's nothing. To me, as a father. When I come in and I see something spilled on the rug and I got my son and my daughter both looking at point and they say, God, it was an accident. That connotates to me that, you know, nobody did anything wrong. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when we have a car crash and we call it an accident, we're all of a sudden taking away any sort of responsibility for people's actions that cause that accident so we as lawyers need to do a better job and there's so many other examples besides accident that i could talk about where us as lawyers where we what what we think is one definition is totally something else and that's all part of changing the culture and changing the um misperceptions that 
I see out there. Um, these are tough cases, all of them from, you know, the, uh, uh, when, when somebody slips in, uh, on a broken sidewalk on the city of New York or whatever city you may be in, these, the, the, this is a tough case that takes investigation and, um, as to who created it, who's, who, who, what, what work was performed there? Did we, was there notice? You know, the city of New York, for example, has over 12,000 roads and streets. There's a requirement that they need to have known or caused and created uh -huh. a defect on one of their streets. Absolutely. So, uh, so these are all things that we would have to find out before we bring a lawsuit. Absolutely. Um, it's not just, you know, we file a document with the courthouse and we get a phone call and somebody's getting, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars for a broken pinky. That's just not how the law works. <laughs> Absolutely not. So can you share a particularly challenging uh, case you handled and, and and how you overcame any obstacles to reach a successful resolution? You know, I, I, I just finished I, the the the. the the tragic and complicated and catastrophic cases that um, I've 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 worked on in my career, um, they they I just finished one. They tend to be in the malpractice arena. Um, I just finished one where a twenty-seven-year-old guy who had a an African American guy. He had two kids. He had asthma. He would occasionally go to the emergency room at the local hospital when his asthma attacks got bad. Give him an inhaler. Sometimes they'd have to intubate him if it got worse. Um, on this occasion, it did get worse. It went to the hospital. He they tried to do an endotracheal intubation, and when the emergency room attending doctor did the intubation. They put the tube through his esophagus instead of his larynx. Wow. Um, wow. He, he was deprived of carbon dioxide in his brain. He died four days later. He left yeah. behind to uh, a young man who's now eight years old. Um, that's a tragic one that I just finished. Wow. Finished a similar one not too long ago of a father and son who were swimming up at a uh, private gym in uh, the upstate New York area and the uh, the the lifeguard on duty went to went to he was talking to someone else he wasn't paying attention and the um the 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 one of the swimmers my client he went under the water and he was under the water for over a minute till the lifeguard realized and pulled him up but by that time he was terribly brain dead and um he eventually died. Um, and then I'm dealing with a tragic one as we speak, where I have a wonderful, wonderful client, and she's a she's a quadriplegic from a horrible accident, car accident, um, and uh, it's it, it, it's just it's it's very very amazing to me how you know things can change in a second. Yeah, and absolutely. Doing what we do, it's very difficult to. Um, remove the emotions and um it, it, it's like people ask me how do i do it all the time and you know it's uh it's it's the fire that fuels me that makes me want to you know make sure for example that this client who's she can't move anything lower neck i want to make sure she at least i want to make sure that money is not one of her problems for the rest of her life absolutely and that's a good point so so that's that's why i work so hard doing what we do and we've had such good results because of that absolutely so how do you stay up to date with the changes and development in personal injury law um so i uh i read the new york law journal every day um i'm also i also read all of the appellate division decisions that come down every day and then i participate in a lot of continuing legal education. I do a lot of lectures. So when I do lectures to attorneys, it's important that I'm up to date on the law. Um, but, you know, I'm, uh, I have a busy practice. 
and we spend a lot of time and attention on each one of our files. Mm -hmm. And when we do so, that means a real thorough investigation and analysis of what the law is. Mm -hmm. The beauty of my business is every single day I can be doing something that is, you know, totally different. You know, for example, I, I, I just today I've been working on a case of an eight year old who was injured in a camp because there was a negligent. They had him doing double and triple somersaults on a trampoline. And then I was working on, a you know, a. Uh, a, a a spinal surgery malpractice case that went wrong. And then I was working on a rape case and that was all today. And all the three of those cases involve er different areas of the law that I need Absolutely. to be up, you know, I need to be up to speed on. So I'm constantly researching and um, investigating what the new developments are and what the recent case law holds um, what the statutes are that are being amended or, you know, revised by the legislator. But that's why I do read the law journal every day. And that's why um, I'm, you know, I'm a benefit of a list where, you know, we're a secret list, a bunch of us lawyers do what we do and we share secrets and we share tips and techniques. And one of the guys, he happens to put up all of the decisions from the higher courts whenever they come down. So, you know, whenever I have an opportunity, I'm constantly refreshing myself on what the current state of the law is. Absolutely. And that's, um, and, and, you know, to young lawyers, the best way to go about doing, you know, getting experience, of course, is going down to the courthouse and watching some of the trials and, and seeing some of the greats so you can learn how to really do this effectively. Absolutely. So how do you balance the need to advocate uh, for your clients with the ethical considerations of the legal profession? Um, advocate with the ethical considerations of my client. How do I balance the need? You know, it's pretty simple. Um, what we do, we, the license that we have is something that needs to not be taken lightly. And there's a certain level of responsibility as officers of the court that we have mm -hmm. that you know i'm proud to say i've never had an ethical violation against me in in over 20 years of law and you know it, i'm a big believer that if you work hard you're going to get good results um and then if you get good results you're going to get a good reputation and the business is going to come through the door based on that there's 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 no need to you know um do anything that is unethical with, with by by and still have a successful you know uh valued practice so you know you just constantly never always always need to keep in mind that level of responsibility that we have um, never, never put yourself in a situation that would either that, that would even be perceived as being something below that line. Um, and, and that's sort of the motto that you need to live by. That's how I live by. And that's how I've been practicing. And that's why you're successful. And, you know, I guess you might add, it's also important to have good people around you. Yes. I've had the benefit of you know, excellent lawyers uh, been with me for many years who are watching my back, so to speak. So when I'm out there, you know, out on trial doing what I do best, you know, making sure they're making sure that there's no statutes being blown on any of my other cases or <laughs> you know, anything else for that matter. Absolutely. So um, how do you manage and prioritize your caseload to ensure that each client receives the attention and resources they need? Uh, you know, that's a tr always a tricky thing. And um, I like to think that I give my time and full attention to every one of my clients at some point. Um, it's sort of a matter as when it's your turn, when you're up at the line. Um, 
and that depends on the life of the case. All of these cases have lives, sort of like a baseball game. You go through various stages of the case. You go through your initial investigation, then you file your lawsuit, then you have your initial discovery, then then you have more discovery, then you trial calendar, and then you know. So, you know, at some point, you know, the hardest thing to deal with and to tell clients is how long sometimes the wait is but you will you know it's important for clients to keep in mind i'm not making money if i'm not moving your case but there's factors that are beyond our control like the delays in the courthouses there's just it it takes a while to get the cases through the system there's a lot of cases there's not enough judges um so it's very important for clients to have open lines of communication. You want to know what's going on, give me a call. Absolutely. I'm more than happy to tell you. And that goes for the for lawyers, and it's got to be an open line. And at some point, when your case is up, you know, for example, on every case, I have to do an intensive document called a bill of particulars. I I get very, very, very involved in the case because of that. Absolutely. Two quick questions. We've got two minutes left. Uh, the first question, um, can you share some tips for individuals who have been injured in an accident and are considering pursue, pursuing a legal action? Um, if you are injured in an accident and you are considering pursuing legal action, the first thing you need to do is speak to a qualified attorney whether it's yourself, if it's the state of New York or anyone else within your state, make sure it's someone local, somebody who knows what they're doing and somebody who has familiarity with auto accidents in your particular state. Don't talk to anyone until you speak to a qualified attorney. It's um, a tough thing to do to find out who's qualified, but it's very important and seek medical attention, not just for the lawsuit, but that's for your own health and benefit. Absolutely. Last question. We got one minute left. Um, what do you see as the future of a uh, personal injury law, uh, the industry as a whole, and how do you plan to adapt and stay ahead of um, of the curve? Amazing question with one minute left because I can go for four hours on All it. Right. Let me tell you this, and um, I thoroughly believe this. It's been everyone said for years we would be legislated out. Now people say that we're going to be run out by the technology. Um, I don't think we're going anywhere for a long time. I think that people will always, who are injured, need a attorney to have their day in court to provide justice and fair and fair compensation for their injuries. And that can only be done by somebody who is skilled and experienced in the law and, um, I think we are going to have a long, healthy uh, career in business. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been an a, a awesome um, podcast today. Uh, man, I really enjoyed it. I know everybody's going to enjoy it. I'll give you a call, Justin, um, pretty soon. I'll give you a call and let you know um, what we're going to do from here. All right. Let me know, Randy. Thanks so much. I really appreciate the time. All right. Have a good one, man. We'll be in touch. Thank you so much. Yeah.